What's up guys, so in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to install leaf springs on your Toyota Tacoma. This does apply to all 2005 to 2019 Tacomas. As long as you guys are following along, you should be okay, but if you run into any problems, make sure to send us an email, support at TacomaBees.com, we'll make sure to help you guys out. Now towards the end of the video, I'm going to be discussing different methods on how to lift the rear end of your truck, as well as what should be the right lift spring for you. Now that that's been said, let's jump right into it. The first thing you're going to want to do is lift your vehicle. In our situation, we lifted our vehicle with a twin post lift. Now remove both rear wheel assemblies by using a 21 millimeter socket. Make sure to raise the vehicle to a height that you're going to be comfortable working under. Place an under hoist jack stand under the rear axle and raise it slightly. For this next step, you're going to need a 17 millimeter wrench and a 17 millimeter socket to disconnect the lower shock mount. You might need to drive the bolt out with a punching hammer. Since we're only installing the leaf spring on this video, it won't be necessary to remove the entire rear shock assembly. Simply remove the shock absorber and set it off to the side. Now we need to remove the U-bolt plate. Using a 19 millimeter socket, remove the four nuts and washers. Guys, it is important that you put your U-bolt plate to the side just the way you took it out. That way when it's time to install it back again, it goes in the same way that it came out. Remove the front and rear U-bolt and then the bump stop. Disconnect the brake cable bracket by using a 12 millimeter socket and make sure to slide it back out of your way. Using your hoist jack stand, lower the rear axle assembly about two inches. You're going to want to make sure not to overstretch these flexible brake lines. Now it's time to disconnect the front of the leaf spring by using a 19 millimeter wrench and a 19 millimeter socket. While supporting the spring, force the bolt out by using a pry bar. Remove the upper shackle nut by using a 19 millimeter wrench and removing the nut with a 19 millimeter socket. Next, remove the lower shackle nut in the same way as we did the upper. Rotate the spring and shackle forward. Since I have my emergency tire mounted on my rear bumper, there was no need to remove it. For this part, please refer back to your owner's manual to remove your emergency tire. Drive the bolt out the rest of the way. Now you can remove the leaf spring assembly and set it off to the side. It's time to start assembling the new leaf springs. In order to extend your bushings life and avoid squeaky noises, you're going to want to lubricate your bushings. The first thing you're going to want to do is lubricate the working surfaces. For these bushings, you will only need to lubricate the inside part. Now install the bushings using a dead blow hammer. Do the same thing on the other side. Next, you're going to grab your sleeve and install it by using a dead blow hammer. Repeat this same process for the front and rear leaf spring. Now install the shackle in the rear of the spring this is done by fitting the shackle over the bushing. Make sure to install the bolt, washer, and nut in the same direction as it was originally. Make sure to leave them loose for now. By holding the bolt, nut, and washer, position your leaf spring on top of your axle. I would recommend you guys use some help for this part. Align the front of the spring with the front spring mount and install the bolt. It might be necessary to tap it into place by using a hammer. Install the washer and then the nut. Leave the nut loose for now. Position the bottom of the shackle in the rear mount. Install the bolt and then the nut. You're also going to want to leave this nut loose for now. Place the bump stop on top of the leaf spring assembly and install the front supplied U-bolt and then the rear. Now install the U-bolt plate in the same orientation as it was originally. Install all four supplied washers and nuts. 
I do like to install the U-bolt plate first to avoid dropping the axle. Raise the rear axle assembly by using your hoist jack stand and make sure your leaf spring pin aligns with your axle. You can proceed to tightening the bolts in a crisscross manner. You want to make sure that the bolts are going in at the same rate. Once the bolts are snug, make sure to torque the nuts to 75 pounds. Next, tighten the front spring mount bolt by using a 19mm socket and holding the nut with a 19mm wrench. Make sure to tighten the bolt to 89 feet pounds. Tighten the rear upper shackle bolt in the same manner. Do not tighten the lower shackle bolt just yet. This will be done later. Now it's time to install the rear shock that we had left off to the side. You might have to use your jack to position it into place. Install the supply bolt, washer, and nut. While holding the bolt with a 19 millimeter socket and holding the nut with a 19 millimeter wrench, torque the nut to 43 feet pounds. Finally, reinstall the brake line bracket. Now it's time to install the passenger leaf spring by following the same procedure shown in the driver's side. Once you have both leaf springs installed, make sure to remove all the hoist jack stands. Now it's time to lower the vehicle. Install the rear tire by snugging the lug nut in a crisscross pattern. Torque both wheel assemblies to 87 pounds. Now you can finish lowering the truck completely. Before tightening the lower shackle bolt, jump around your tailgate to ensure that the bushings are stabilized. Finally, now you can torque the lower shackle bolts to 89 pounds on both sides. That was it for the install guys, pretty straightforward, a really cool project for you to do with your pops, your friends, or simply do it by yourself. I do recommend you guys Google any DIY shops around your area to help you get any tools you might need, or simply do it in your garage. Now, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, I was going to talk about the three different methods on lifting the rear of your vehicle as well as what should be the right lift kit for you. The first method is adding blocks to the rear of your truck. Basically, what you're doing is you're getting a block and you're adding it underneath your leaf spring in between the leaf spring and your axle. The sole purpose of this is just to lift your vehicle. There's no performance behind it. You can get between three inches of lift to six inches. Now, I don't recommend you guys to go this route. I personally did it myself at the beginning of 2012 on our second gen Tacoma, and I don't recommend it. Performance-wise, it sucks. The ride is extremely stiff. I mean, you could switch out the, the suspension, the shocks, and stuff like that, but it's not the best way to go, guys. It is the most economic way to do it, but I don't recommend it. The second method is to add a leaf. It's basically stated in the name and what you're doing is you're adding an additional leaf to your current leaf pack in order to gain height as well as towing capacity. And the third method is basically what we just finished doing right now, which is completely swapping out your current leaf pack to a brand new one, which moves us on to the next question. What should be the right leaf springs for you? There's tons of variables that do come into play and there's a lot of companies out there that are doing leaf springs for you guys, but there's two companies out there that we really recommend. One of them being Old Man Emo, which is leaning more towards the economic side, and then you have your Deaver Springs. If you're building your daily and you simply just wanna add height to the rear of your truck, we recommend you go with either the Old Man Emos or the Deaver's J66. Now the Deaver's J66 is the current leaf spring that we have on our second gen Tacoma, as well as 54 Yoda also has it on his uh, Tacoma. Now, I, I am gonna put a link down below to his Instagram channel. Feel free to send him a DM. The guy's really cool. Get his feedback on these leaf springs or simply just ask around. We definitely recommend it. We fell in love with them when we put them on our second gen and we have not had any complaints. If you're planning on building a weekend warrior, you can also go ahead and go with these same two leaf springs, but then there's more questions to start to come into play. So here's when we go ahead and now you have to ask yourself, how much weight am I gonna be adding to my truck? Am I gonna be adding a rear bumper? Am I gonna be adding an overland bed rack, a tent? All this stuff, quickly starts adding up guys. And that's exactly what happened to us. That's why we did this video. We wanted to make sure you guys knew exactly what leaf spring to get in order to save money and later on not have to spend money on leaf springs again because you miscalculated how much weight you added. So with that said, Deaver Springs does offer 
three stages. You got your stage one expedition series, which is between zero to 300 pounds. Then you have your stage two, which is between 400 pounds to 600 pounds. And then you have your stage three, which is from 700 pounds all the way to 1,000 pounds. Now the leaf springs that we installed in this video were the Deaver Expedition Series Stage 3. Now at the beginning of the year, we did go with the Stage 2 because we miscalculated how much weight we were gonna add to our truck. We did not take into account the deck system that we added. We did not take into account everything that goes inside the deck system. We also did not take into account all the camera gear. It's really easy for you to miscalculate this and you do have to plan ahead. Where are you planning to take your build basically? So with the stage twos that we had, you can see clearly in this picture how much we were sagging in the rear. Now at the beginning when we didn't have the overland bed rack, we didn't have the tent and we didn't have the deck system, our truck was sitting at perfect height. I mean, it looked sweet. Now that we added the stage three on our current truck and we have all of that weight, we have the deck system, we have the overland bed rack, we have the tent, take a look at how it looks. It's no longer sagging. With that said guys, make sure to plan your build out. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave a comment down below. I'm interested to know if you guys thought this process was easy, if you feel like you can take on this task or if you've already done it before. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video. Guys, I want to do a huge shout out to the DIY shop here in Austin, Texas. Next to me, I have Chris. Dude, it's been a pleasure, yes, man. Sir. It was Thanks a pleasure for having me. me. Um, the, he's going to talk to us real quick about what this shop is all about. Yeah, so we're the Austin DIY shop, 16501 Bratton Lane. Uh, the whole idea behind it is you come in, we supply the tools and the lift, and um, let you go free range. Now, if you need any minor assistance or you need me to come and weld something, etc., some kind of mechanical uh, help, then that's what we're here for. Outside of that, it's all uh, DIY. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. Definitely recommend it, guys. You guys, if you're in the Austin area or just Texas in general, need to work on your truck, come check out the shop.